That's me, isn't it? <laughs> Live and die for Forest, and obviously captain of the club. <laughs> so you must be about forty on that. Uh, but fair play, mate. Consistency levels, senior leadership. Also lifting the trophy at Wembley. Many a Forest player would have dreamed to do that. I can assure you, we're all very, very proud of you within the academy. Well done. Let's push for the next two hundred. Oh, it was lovely. Thank you very much for that. Joe, some special messages there. How did that make you feel? Yeah, um, proud. Um, nice to hear from some of the lads I've not spoken to for a while. So, uh, like uh, Gaz said on it, look forward to the next 200. Looking forward, not back. And you started watching Forrest in the stands to go on and now make 200 appearances for this great club. A 10-year-old Joe Wall must have been absolutely delighted with that. Yeah, you know what? I, when I was younger, the majority of my Forest games were um, listen, listening to them on the radio on the back on the way back from from my games, I played Saturdays and Sundays for Hucknall Sports and Hucknall Harriers, and listening to Chippers and Colin Frey on on the radio was was the highlight of of my weekend really. Brian Laws, Hodgie, uh, Sutz on um, BBC Radio Nottingham. So that was that was my forest when I was a kid because because I played at the weekend. So to actually be involved with the club to train as a 13, 14 year old and come all the way up to eventually captain them in the Premier League is is amazing and something that I definitely don't take for granted and um, hopefully it can last a, a few more years. And you joined the academy back in 2011, what were those early days like, what can you remember? Just good, good fun, I was on trial for about seven or eight months, I think it was between um, the tail end of a season and the start of the next, so it was quite a now biting anxious wait to find out if I was actually going to get signed by the club. And then, yeah, fighting for a scholarship, like Gaz said on the video, was it was painful and hard and you start doubting yourself and all I ever wanted to do was, was play professional football, um, never mind for Forest. When you're a young lad in the academy, you don't really, you think it's it's easy and all the, all the professionals uh, have life of Riley, it's, it's lovely, but it's tough, the, the road is tough. You, a lot of doubters, you start doubting yourself, um, coaches, loads of people coming and going, and it's, it is difficult to, to stay level-headed and, and work and fight to, to get into the game. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud to, to have cemented a little bit of um, consistency and, and to play 200 games is, yeah, quite incredible if you'd have told me that at 14, 15 then I wouldn't have believed you. So let's take you back to your Forest first team debut October 2016 away at Reading, does that one still live long in the memory? Yeah definitely, um, it was Chris Gunter and Gareth McClary scored for Reading who were obviously two, two ex-Forest players, um, I think it was Armand Traore, Matt Mills, uh, Stojkovic in goal if I remember correctly, so yeah it was uh, a very proud day, probably that still one of my, my favourite memories, um, just to say I'd played for Forest, especially at the age of 19, at centre half was, was something that I'll uh, remember forever. You went on to make a further 21 appearances that season, were you pleased with how you adapted to Championship football as such a young lad? The Championship's a difficult league, after coming off the back of a loan spell in League 2 and um, the bombs were being thrown in the box and you tin out heading everything away. The championship's not too dissimilar, really, um, and to do that at, at 19, at, at centre half, it's different. I think when you're a young winger, for example, you can kind of like hide in the game or, or not get involved. Um, you get the last five minutes of your debut, but to start on my first appearance and and play um, in defence, it, it's 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 difficult, and especially at 19, I was obviously very very nervous and. Um, Obviously, you get the butterflies before every game, but especially at that age, playing championship football. But no, it was something that I think I was ready for. And like you say, to make, what, 21 appearances that season is, is incredible, really. And something that set me in, in good stead for the seasons to follow. 
looking back at last season in particular to have made 46 appearances across all competitions that showed how magical it is at, at times last season to play for this football club and, and how the city can really get behind the team. Yeah the following that Forest have are incredible you only have to listen to stadiums that are half full on away days and our Forest, Forest fans are, are superb I just want to thank every single one of them they've, they've been excellent I never fail to to sing, to chant, to support the whole team, the messages on social media, just everything. They don't realise how important they are to, to us achieving um, things on the pitch. So I just want to th say thank you to all, all the fans. Just take us back to the morning of the playoff final. You knew you were starting, you knew you were going to lead the Reds out at Wembley. Just take us back to your thoughts at that time. It's something that you've worked your whole life for, but at the same time, you don't want to overthink it. You just crack on, you're in the zone. It's something that everybody was, was looking forward to the game and um, for me especially I'd, off off the city um, that I knew were at the game and sorting tickets out and things like that but in terms of the actual occasion it was just like make the most of it because you don't know it could be your first and only time at Wembley. And I guess at the full time whistle that's when really the, the emotion can come out and you can really celebrate with the supporters. Incredible, I just remember dropping to my knees and I looked over and saw saw the bench, the manager, all the directors, the, the people who um, are behind the scenes at the club and everyone was just like that and you just think, yeah, inc incredible. Um, the noise, the atmosphere, yeah, must have meant so, so much to everybody and something that you look back on fondly but at the same time it's not good to dwell on successes last season and, and all that, that was nice, it's right, let's crack on roll your sleeves up and, and get to work this year. You were named permanent captain of Nottingham Forest this summer heading into the Premier League, our, our first obviously campaign at this level for 23 years. How did that feel for you? Yeah, very proud. Um, yeah, I'm not really one to manifest and, and think um, how well you've done. Obviously, you put that video in front of me and it's like, oh, it's actually uh, nice to be recognised sometimes, but in terms of being made captain, it was something that I felt like I was already doing. Um, obviously, Grabs last year was a fantastic captain. Michael Dawson before that, Ben Watson, Chris Cohen for, for years. I think it's something that I've always tried to take a snippet off all these the senior pros um, in and around the dressing room and the managers and the coaches. Um, and it's something that yeah I've wanted for, for quite a while and be given that responsibility is something I'm very proud of. And we speak to some of the academy players from time to time and they always reference you as one of the players, obviously local, playing for their local team and, and really a regular in the side. Does that mean a lot to you as well? Yeah, definitely. I think just a normal lad, grew up in Hucknall. All I wanted to do was, was play professional football, spent many hours kicking the ball against the wall at home and to be able to be given the opportunity to come and train at a class setup that Forest is. I just encourage all the, all the kids to um, enjoy it because it's... Kids get so much pressure from their parents as well, never mind themselves, to um, be professional footballers, to eat right, sleep right, um, do everything correct. But it's kind of like forgotten about that you should actually enjoy it and have fun, don't take it too seriously. And that's something that um, I just try to do as a kid and is my biggest advice to, to any young lads out there or girls if you wanted to get into professional football or sport at Forest it's the main thing is to, to enjoy it and um, soak up everything like a sponge all the coaching staff and and your peers just uh, do it with a smile on your face. The bit about Joe is and it's really interesting when Joe plays and I noticed this very young in his career, and we've discussed this, quite often the team did really well, although Joe didn't really show up enormously, but a number of people would challenge how Joe was progressing, and I would say to them, just check the results when Joe plays. And he does the unfashionable football things, the unfashionable academy things as a defender. So everybody looks for the person that's playing really nicely out the back, who distributes the ball really well. Joe could head the ball, Joe could tackle, Joe could intercept, Joe could block, Joe would get the first contact in the box. And as his career has gone on, with some really good people he's worked around, he's improved technically considerably, but those things that he already had have come to the fore more and people are recognising them more. And he's now proved himself to be a very, very competent defender at, pro, at Premier League level. Joe's another player that would have worked very hard to, to rack up the amount of appearances 
you know, at a fairly young young age. Um, obviously, they're in that middle stage where they they're not um, not quite young players, but they're not really experienced players yet. So um, to become that, you need to play games. And for Joe to get to 200 as a as a centre back as well, you know, it's it's hard sometimes to to rack up appearances when you're a centre back, particularly you know when he was breaking through in the in the championship. Is a, is a great achievement um, for him, and he, you know he deserves a lot of respect and, and credit for for that. But um, time to work even harder now. Joe's a, a very big personality in the dressing room, um, a really positive influence, especially on the younger players, and someone I think that the academy looks up to, um, and a lot of lads want to emulate. Obviously, what he's done and what he's going to continue to do for the football club.